Hey, let's learn Enchantment by Brian Balmish is today on the flute. Don't forget to make the quality of the video playback as slow as you need it to go to learn these particular passages. Here we go. Oh, and don't forget to stick around to the end of the video when I'm going to go over some tips and tricks on how to make this thing sound awesome. Count your mulchy measures rest. Big breath. Thing number one is, is when you're in a live performance, you just got to go with the flow and get the best take you can. So if you're in the middle of the concert and you're playing the song, don't mess up and start crying and, and tell everyone, I call it telegraphing the mistake. Don't telegraph to everyone that you made the mistake and like chirp the note like I did, right? You don't want to do that. Now let's talk about some of the cool things in the piece that you can look forward to working on. Number one, I talked about these multi measure rests. Make sure you count those correctly. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And we get to the end of four, then you come in at this first measure. This MP indicates that you're going to be playing a soft note. Also, you see two notes at the same time right here. Those are optional low notes for people who are having maybe trouble getting the higher notes to come out. Really though, on flute, it shouldn't be a major issue. I think this is really for harmony's sake. The low G does provide some support to the G minor chord, that G on the low end. So um, if your band director tells you to play that, great. Um, if you choose to want to play that, great. I'm sure it'll help things out in that uh, woodwind texture. So when I went to play this first note at measure five, I took a giant breath. Make sure you can get all the way through these four measures. I was unable to do that that round, but in a previous take that I was practicing for this video, I was actually able to make it to like beat three and a half, almost four. That's where you want to be as well. Measure nine, mezzo forte, MF. Just make sure you're playing with a nice consistent sound. You don't want to uh, get too, too loud. Uh, I try to give it a little bit more energy as we got through with measure 12 and into measure 13. That's like the impact point of the mm, da, da. So don't forget to grow there. Measure 13 forward just kind of has some typical nice, fat, loud notes. When you get to measure 17, which is where my cursor is right now, da, 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 da. You want to make sure that those have some ring on the front end of the note. Um, if I played it a certain way and it's not the way that your band director tells you, or maybe not the way the, the recording sounds, just understand that uh, I'm not God's gift to flute playing. I'm just trying to get you guys some fingerings and some approaches going. So uh, I would play this as a trumpet player as da, 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 with just like eensy, weensy, a bit of space between the half notes. And the accent does imply that you should play it a little bit louder than the things before it. 21, mezzo piano, play all that nice and soft. Be sure, though, that you're playing in tune. You notice that when I got down to the load register, I started being out of tune with the recording. I had to make some adjustments on my face and make sure I was rolled in enough and or out enough in particular cases. So make sure you're paying attention to where your tone's at and how you're blending with the ensemble that you're playing with. When you get to measure 29, those are two soft B flats. Just make sure they're as soft as you can get them without being out of tune. 35, uh, you heard me do this in the recording more than likely, at least I tried to. Um, start soft, louder here, and then crescendo, get louder and louder as you get into measure 39. You don't wanna uh, be super loud in measure 38. You wanna save that for the downbeat of 39 and then stay consistent as you play through these notes. Stay consistent with your volume. Um, this is where I started chirping the most because again, I don't play the flute enough to be able to do this a justice the way that I would want to do it in a, in a professional setting. Um, but that's, you know, good for you to know too, that even the 
dumb band director makes mistakes sometimes and can't do it. So you should just work for that. Um, a little bit of time and effort will go a long way on making sure that that's really impactful and full. Last bit to the end, make sure that you play real soft and that you follow the cues of your band director or whoever you're uh, listening for. Um, I didn't do the thing that I would have taught in the building, which is separate this G from this last G. Dum, dum. A little bit of space before that last note would be appropriate. So uh, I didn't execute that. And so whatever, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm telling you now, make sure you have some space before that last note. That's probably what the person who's conducting you is going to want you to do. All right. If this helped, make sure to like and subscribe. Drop me a comment. Tell me how terrible my flute playing is. Dude, I will let it through the comments. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure it gets you the comments filter. <laughs> like I have all the comments filtered so we don't get bots and stuff, um, spamming messages. But like, seriously, if you if you put a, Mr. Buller is the worst flute player ever, like I will totally let it through. I'll heart it and I'll say, yep, told you so. <laughs> all right, guys, have a good one. I'll see you in the next song. Bye-bye.